You want to learn how to make something? Drift tykes? Death ray beam cannon? Huh? Laser engraved dog tags? Oh, a lightsaber that doubles as a sonic screwdriver. You have an imagination? We found a place for you right here in Riverside at Vocademy. Gene? How you doing? Good, how you doing, man? I'm fantastic, thank you. Tell us a little bit about Vocademy. Vocademy is a makerspace. Uh, makerspace is not a term most people are familiar with, but eventually it will be. Um, it's a place where people come together and learn hands-on skills and do whatever they want with those skills. So the most common comparison we get to is a vocational school. Well, the difference is, is when you go to a vocational school, you take the classes, you learn something, then they kick you out. <laughs> sure. We don't kick you out. <laughs> We're gonna teach you the fundamentals of a hands-on skill, woodworking, metalworking, 3D printing, you know, state-of-the-art technologies and a lot of uh, old school skills. But then when you're done learning, you come back and use the tools here. So we say it's education for your benefit, not for the benefit of your job. What you do with those skills we teach you is up to you. But the idea is, if you find something you love to do here, you're gonna keep coming back and getting better and better at it. This sounds like one of those places, like when you're a kid, can you imagine a place where you can go and make anything? This sounds like what you put together here. Exactly what it is. So, so yeah, we used to have shop class in schools, middle school and high school. You'd go for wood shop or metal shop, and, and a lot of us found that's our passions, that's our careers. Well, those are pretty much all gone, at least on the west coast of this country. There's no more shop class left. And then I thought, well, I can go to a school district and maybe revive it in one school, but then I have a narrow audience. Why not create that shop class, that sandbox for you and your friends, but then open it up to every age? Mm -hmm. And right now, our, we're gonna have members as young as seven all the way up to 97 if they want. There's, there is no demographic for us, because mm -hmm. we're makers, and makers come in all ages and all sizes, um, and we love that fact. How does somebody get involved? How can somebody come out here, and what can they expect to learn? It, it's easy. Think of us as a gym. You know how the gym works. We're open 11 to 11 every day, seven days a week. So if you're working a full-time job, you can come in the evenings or on weekends with your friends and your family. So take a gym, it's membership, and it's classes. And then after taking classes, you use the equipment. It works exactly the same way. So you look online, you find the classes you want to take, you come take those classes. If you think you want to stick around and use our equipment and be in this amazing collaborative environment, you join and become a member. Our classes are whenever our members want them to be. So we're not a school where you must come Wednesday nights at this o'clock or Thursday mornings. If you miss a class, you get an F. That's not how this place works. You see the class you want to take, you take it. You come in that day, and then after class, start using that, those tools, from a sewing machine to a 3D printer to a, our laser engraver and cutters coming really soon. Uh, all these years, I keep hearing from my friends in industry, they're not making the people we need. Mm -hmm. I always say that this country doesn't have a job shortage, it has a skills shortage. And I keep, and I keep talking to schools and we're, we're, they're not offering the programs. So I had this opportunity to go work for uh, our local university, and I went there for five years, kind of try to convince them that we need to make engineers with hands-on skills. Let's open up the shop to them and have a course, but they're not interested. They're more academic, they're more theoretical. And then I thought, I'll go to the school districts and offer them the same thing. Let's bring back shop class. It's not in our requirements. It's not in our college prep requirements. And I thought, well, maker spaces were coming about. The first ones like in Germany about a decade ago. And they came to America, and I thought, and they're small, 2,000 square feet, a bunch of people come together in a collaborative space. So I said, well, that's still limiting. Why not make a space big enough to fit a lot of people? Because a wood shop on its own probably couldn't survive, nor could a metal shop or a 3D printing studio. But if you combine them all in one building and then mix all these creative people together, amazing things happen. Sure. And, and my background's been all manufacturing my whole life. And I own my own little uh, business designing uh, and building things. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, um, I want to open this up to everyone given everyone the opportunity to be that creative person that may not have the opportunity to be. So I say I make engineers better. I don't make engineers. I am the opportunity <laughs> for a high school kid who's not sure what he wants to do a living to find his passion. Mm -hmm. I am the inventor's playground. If someone has an idea for a product but doesn't have a quarter million dollars worth of tools, mm -hmm. this is that place. So wow. it's a lot of things to a lot of people. Take me a little bit around the shop and just sure, kind of, sure, obviously absolutely. you see some woodwork going on behind here. Correct, but these correct. pieces are created here. Created here, correct. So we have, uh, this young man came to us, he's roaming the building somewhere, started taking wood shops, started doing some turning, and now he's creating gifts and he's about to open up his own Etsy store to start selling this stuff. No way. So this is a 19 year old kid that, that either played video games and now he's here all the time creating these, these beautiful, beautiful works of art. This is not a place for people with talent. This is a place for people who are willing to learn the skills. And skills are equal. We can all get the same skills. Here, you're, you're making parts for your own 3D printer, correct? So he used, he used our 3D printer to print parts for his own 3D printer. <laughs> really? Absolutely, absolutely. And those wow. are beautifully functional components. 
Oh my goodness. We're doing a bunch of programming and, and we do we do computer aided design in here. So a lot of people when they get a 3D printer for home, they get to print pictures of other people's stuff. Here we'll teach you how to make those objects in 3D printing. Absolutely, so it's, it's beautiful. Okay. What do we have going on back here? So one of our one of our instructors is a, a model maker. He built that uh, 747 model, and oh, he's going to be man. one of our instructors. The beautiful thing about here is we're not an accredited school, nor do we pretend to be, and we yeah. don't promise anyone a job after we're done. What we do is we take someone who's got a talent and a passion for teaching, and we put it together with people that want to learn that skill, and that's how it works. Just like it was for centuries, that you take a talented master of the art and you give them a bunch of apprentices, and that's how they learn. And the beautiful thing about this place is no one's forced to be here. In a school environment, there are people in that classroom who don't want to be there, they don't want to learn. Whereas here, the people that come to us, they want to learn these subjects, we don't have to force it on them. This is a, these are milling machines. This one's controlled by human, this one's controlled by human or a computer. Oh wow. So for example, okay. this was made on this machine. So a cutting tool took a solid block of plastic in this case and cut this pattern and then went back and cut this amazing pattern, what a human cannot do by hand. Okay. Whereas that machine over there, a manual mill, would be able to do simple shapes. However, I crank the cutting tool, move it around. Okay. Whereas this one, I take my computer-aided design knowledge and I input it in this machine and give it the right parameters, it'll create shapes like this. And that computer-aided design knowledge that you're referring to is what you get out of the courses that you take Correct. here, right? Correct. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. If you invent something at your work, it's your company's property. If you invent something at a school or a university, it's the university's property. Here, it's your property. Hmm. We can lay no claim to anything people come up with here. Let's say you come up with a product. You use our computer-aided design, 3D printers. You make a prototype. Mm -hmm. Make a bunch of your first parts here. Start selling them. We rent our members' offices. We want your global headquarters to start here. Oh my God! This gentleman here is, is working on a piece of plastic. It's your uh, belt and disc sander. Okay. And he's got a product he's working on. And uh, this room is actually going to be plastics and composites. So what we teach is industrial arts. We don't do artistic stuff. But if you take something called cosplay, making your own costume and props, yeah. it's artistic. But each one of these things requires an industrial art. From vacuum forming, to resin casting, to molding, to fiberglassing. So we teach you a specific industrial skill, but then you go on and do crazy stuff like this with it. That is awesome. So, is this, like, yeah, is absolutely. this? This was carved out of wood. Oh my goodness, so, check that out. So where are we now? This looks a little bit different than machine shop. This is our sewing department. Sewing is an industrial art. So what's amazing is our very first sewing class was half men, half women. Because you know what guy sewing is, right? Um, upholstery. Upholstery. Oh, you build okay. that custom oh, Harley, yeah. you're all uh, proud of your welding and machine parts. What about that saddle? Mm -hmm. You want to wrap some leather around it, you want to put some nice stitching in that leather. That's sewing. How long do the classes last? Mm -hmm. Anywhere from one to three hours. Okay. And also, I wanted to mention that we have introductory classes. Like, you know nothing about 3D printing. Mm -hmm. Correct. Come learn at our introductory class and they're all free. Every subject has an introductory class to teach you about that subject. They're free. This is a mix of old school and new technology. So Woodshop has been around, well, as, as long as trees and humans have been around. <laughs> sure. uh, so here we have old school lathes. These machines probably haven't changed in 100 years, okay? But we have something called a saw stop, table saw. It is the first saw, it's patented. It's the one that will not cut you. It senses a human hand and stops the blade. A little explosive cartridge makes the blade stop and drop into the machine. Wow. So wherever we can, we mix the state-of-the-art technology. That's what we want to teach and show with old school skills that cannot ever change. If you get stuck, I mean, do you have uh, you know, helpers help? You know, who, who's not them, helping you? We call them the red shirts, our staff. The red just, shirts. Just like on, on Star Trek, the red shirts, you know, they go down to the planet. They're, they're Wait, sacrificial. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we call them our red shirts. So whenever in doubt, you find a red shirt or there's an instructor around. We actually have open collaboration time to where the instructor is here to help people with their advanced or intermediate projects. Okay. So absolutely. So there's always someone here. And our instructors and our staff is also told that there's no egos in this place. If you don't know, you don't pretend. It's too dangerous. And that rule so you, four or something exactly, like that? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So always ask for help. How many people can actually take a class at one time? Because I know we're at the start of a class, but... Sure. Uh, we limit it to 12. Okay. So we're not going to fill a hall with 300 people. <laughs> you don't have the intimacy. There's always uh, an instructor and a support staffer there with you because we want to make sure you're careful. So our class size is limited to 12. So what's missing here is a bunch of old street signs and graffiti on the walls. So we're going to make this place look like an old Detroit garage because we have a lot of people interested in, in, in working on motorcycles and other incredibly cool projects. We're looking at some sort of fun project. We took a kid's ATV, a little, little four-wheeler ATV, and we remodified it 
uh, for remote control. What are we printing right now? Well, we're using state-of-the-art 3D printers and we're printing dollhouse furniture. <laughs> So, so, so it's amazing. You can make, so you know, they, oh, guns, 3D print guns. No, people want to print stuff like this. <laughs> Who's claiming this? I, I, no he's, one? Not, he's not in the room. He's not but in the room. For his daughter. <laughs> you know, he brags, he brings people over to his house and says, look at my daughter's dollhouse. Very cool. No, no, I made that furniture. If you can draw it, if you can find the model online, you press print. And here, after four hours of classes, these machines are yours as a member. 3D printed our own model rocket. And this baby's flown oh a bunch goodness. of times. The parachute's inside here somewhere. So oh that works. Um, let's see here, you can 3D print a uh, little space shuttle, little model. You can do stuff like that. Oh my Very goodness. pretty stuff. Wow, this is dense too. It is very dense. And then when you wow. go to industry and you get around a quarter million dollar 3D printer, you already know how to use one. Because that's all this is. It's scaling up. Wow, this is cool. If you've got an imagination or there's something you want to work on, again, we know the place for you. Vocademy here in Riverside. Oh my goodness, I like the pink tub. Check out the pink tub. <laughs> we'll get you one. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man.